Guys, this is Super Mike 2164. You know, I wanted to talk about this little small this situation. This this little small situation, these type of conversations probably play out millions and millions of times over and over again. All throughout the country. All through time. You know, black people, uh, especially us in America, dealing with the political situation with the battle between the little Democrats and the Republicans and stuff. I mean, but this also plays out between the battle between the French and the Spanish, the battle between the Spanish and the English, the French and the English. You know, we have, we are, who are the victims of these predatory groups. Somehow we, we get into this kind of competition with each other uh, because we can't, we don't have the power or what have you, or the belief that we can defeat the actual enemy we decide to compete with each other to see who's going to pick the winning side. Uh, and these type of things cause us to actually dispute with each other over stuff that, man, it's just obvious. Certain stuff is obvious. So here's a little quick situation. One of the brothers, uh, you know, saying that the Democrats are not causing the influx of the undocumented immigrants into cities. And like I said, I'm not picking on him exactly. Because to me, it's just people, you know, we got to, this is not personal stuff. I'm, we just trying to deal with what's actually true because we're actually trying to solve the problem. I'm not worried about arguing and, you know, proving each other wrong and ha ha, I got you. That right there, that's what's actually causing people, I believe, to say, you know, that they're, they're, it causes them to, to dig their heels in and not actually admit what's actually true. So brother's talking about, you know, the Democrats aren't causing the influx of undocumented immigrants into cities. It's the Republican governors sending them there. OK, and the Venezuelans are here in such large numbers because your white daddy, Trump, destabilized Venezuela. But you're ignorant and easily fooled. So you believe what conservatives feed you. You revere them anyway. So. You know, so here's the conversation. It's like you are a lap dog for your white masters, which is embarrassing. Nobody wants to be a lap dog for anybody, right? And, you know, Trump is the one that did that. Of course, Trump did. He destabilized Venezuela, but he's not the only one who did that. You know what I'm saying? So, because they actually murdered their real leadership, which was the, the guy who called um, Bush Satan. It was Hugo Chavez. Yesterday, the devil came here. Right here. Right here. And it smells of sulfur still today. This table that I am now standing in front of. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, from this rostrum, the president of the United States, the gentleman to whom I refer as at the devil, came here, talking as if he owned the world. Truly, as the owner of the world. I think we could call a psychiatrist to analyze yesterday's statement made by the President of the United States. As the spokesman of imperialism, he came to share his nostrums to try to preserve the current pattern of domination, exploitation, and pillage of the peoples of the world. An Alfred Hitchcock movie could use it as a scenario. I would even propose a title, The Devil's Recipe. As Chomsky says here clearly and in depth, the American empire is doing all it can to consolidate its hegemonistic system of domination. And we cannot allow them to do that. We cannot allow world dictatorship to be consolidated. You know, so Maduro is the second guy that took over. And uh, yeah, so that's how Venezuela happened. But the point is, this is American policy, CIA policy. It doesn't matter what president is sitting in there. They're going to attack these people. Certain they have to. They feel like they have to destabilize the South American region and the Central American region in the Mexican area. They want to keep ignorant leadership, lapdog leadership, in power so that they continue continue to easily extract the resources and capital from these regions. This undercuts your labor power, your labor negotiating power in America. So that's black and white. This undercuts, you know, your farming uh, stuff. 
the farmers, the power of, of regular farmers. It's just an undercutting a situation. So they need to have a region that's unstable so that they could, you know, extract those resources and also have a competition between labor over here. And so that's that's the situation there. That's what they're doing. That's why they keep that region destabilized. So but, you know, because people feel loyalty to their 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 party, which is, I guess, in this case, is the Democrats. They're going to pretend like they don't realize that it's a Republican and a Democrat problem. And, you know, what I responded to to the brother said, hey, if if it was hard, if it wasn't the problem of the Democrats and they were not causing this influx of folks. Then, you know, they know how to kick people out. America destabilized Haiti. Haitians tried to come here. What happened? Biden kicked them out really like a couple of days. They, they only came and it was like the next day they was on a plane back to wherever the hell they came from. They Biden did not play when the black ones came over. The Venezuelans come over. You see, you don't see the dark ones. You don't see the black ones. There's a lot of black people down there. And so here's Leon Ali. He says, uh, you know, he's taking a dig at, at, at the Republic, at the Democrat loving black person. And he says that he only cares about if someone talks about his Lord and Savior Biden Christ, and then they go back and forth, basically arguing the points of enemies. Both sides of these folks are enemies to us. It's, you know, in, in this particular case, it's true. The Republican, the, the, the Democrats are the ones that's causing this because they're sending the signals down. They're inviting these folks in. Uh, but the Republicans and the Democrats have destabilized South America, Reagan, Noriega, you know, the United Fruit Com uh, Company and the CIA, all the way to Truman and all of these folks. And the danger with this hard nosed argument is because what happens is as soon as, uh, let's say that the Republicans win, right? And, uh, you know, they do the, the legal immigration, they stop that, but then they start attacking, you know, black education and some other stuff that black people need, some money that we need, some reparations that we need. And then what it is, is the Democrat black folks are going to say, see, I hope y'all liked that y'all voted for the Republicans. You see, so it actually produces such a disunity of, of, of a lot of our community when we sitting up here arguing so strong these enemies points. We need to be understanding like, look, look, fuck all of these people. Right now, though, this policy is worse for us than these people. We're going to fight these same people, though, that we, you know, that we rather get in on these points. So you got to still keep in mind that you can't argue so much where you alienate your own group of people, though. That's all I'm saying here. So we need to understand that because you have to turn around and fight those Republicans, too. You got to battle them. You can't allow them to take out your resources, your money. That's what the Republicans want to do, too. So this is what you got to understand. You can't be sitting up here like real strong arguing because what, what ends up happening is it, you 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 don't have the full force of your group of people to to assist you in in, you know, in the righteous battle. They've been you know, messing up those folks, uh, place where they live for a long time. So we got to get out of this, this, uh, little stupid to me, it's very ignorant, but you know, it is what it is. So we just got to work through it. But, and I understand everybody feels we get angry at each other for stuff that white people got going on. This is why, I mean, and it's very hard for us to even change that. Cause we so convinced we are so convinced that this person is a sellout. That person is a sellout. Just because they're doing really this, they kind of doing the same thing we're doing. We're arguing for the white man's position. We got to start actually internalizing dominance for our own group. How can we dominate in the situation? Okay, okay, the, the white man is bringing in these other folks. It ain't about the Democrat and Republican. It's the damn white man is doing that. Why? And the reason why is we're going to go over that because they, they see they looking at us as the enemy. And y'all don't even understand these folks looking at you as the enemy. And it's not every single white person. You've got to be able to get smart enough to be able to tell the behaviors and the actions in which white folks 
are doing. The white people are not confused over there. will rather put Biden in. Those conservative white people, they will argue and put Biden in because they're looking at his policy, even though they like Trump a little bit better. But they're going to put Biden in because they see the difference. So it's the debate on their end. And it's about us. It's about us taking our dominance. We got to realize that that's where your that's where your true opposition is. It's not in a Democrat or a liberal or Republican and all kind of thing. Your true opposition is in these white supremacists who realize that they messed up with their birth rates and they can't. See, once we take over dominance of the country, they know for a fact they will never get it back. So they got to keep us in a certain lid to them. So we're going to let them tell you. But I no, want... we got somebody. We got a foundational white American. He's giving the thumbs down. Okay, we got a foundational white American. Let me get you in here. So what's on your mind, sir? Yes, sir. I talk about why Trump is actually shooting the foundational white American community in the foot by threatening to deport all these probationary whites. Now, I just wanted to point this out. You know, white people always got to glam and latch on to every damn thing the black folks got. And they always want to redirect it and change it for their benefit, just like Black Lives Matter. Now they want to say all lives matter, blue lives matter, and all that dumb shit. Uh, Tariq Nasheed created, uh, you know, coined foundational black Americans. And now this white supremacist is talking about foundational white Americans. It's just, you know, we just need to understand that. But, you know, let's keep it going. Immigrants, whatever you call them. Here's the thing. So I hate to admit it, but white people are genetically recessive. And as a result, we're probably going to be extinct in 100 years or so. And we need pro or less or less. I think less than well, that, unfortunately. Here's the thing. We're going to need probationary whites to keep you in check. And if Trump deports, right, if Trump deports all these immigrants, the FBAs are just going to keep breeding and breeding. They're going to take over the U.S. So we need probationary right. whites, immigrants, Latinos, Asians to keep you in check when we're gone. Right. And yeah, now they're trying to flood the zone with. Them. Yeah. So they're trying to. flood. The zone. I'm disappointed. And the thing is, I right. And, and the thing is, it's not really working like it's supposed to, because you have a lot of the people coming in from South America. They have some of those throwback genes because they got a black abuela back home so they'll go mate with a white person here then the baby is born with an afro and a taste for chipotle yeah. so you don't know what to do it's all over the place well that's why i hate so, white race trading simps because they'll you know white men or like i don't know simps who can't get girls who can't find a white girl they'll say oh i'm gonna go knock up some mexican and then the kid's not white that kid's mexican because we're genetically recessive i hate to say it it's just true and um, and then that kid's non-white. And so with all with all the stuff going on, yeah, we're probably going to be extinct soon. And I'm worried what you're going to do when you guys take over the U.S. completely. We need probation. Now, 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 right now, how do you feel about these white women running up on all these brothers? Because that's a big thing, too. The white women are really running up on the brothers. How how the white male supremacists feeling about this with all these white women choosing brothers? You know, it's they just need to be. I don't know. What what do you do with them? They're they're race traders. Just we don't claim them anymore. They've lost their white pass. Right. Um, are you guys focusing more on the Asian girls now? No, because that's another thing. because they're not white. Here's the thing. Um, in order to propagate white society and foundational white American society, you need to have white kids. Here's the problem. Here's an example with black people. A black dude can knock up any race of girl in the world, and that kid's gonna be black because you're dominant genetically. If a white dude right. knocks up any race of woman besides white, that kid's non-white. And so this man is just being blatant about, you know, the bottom line, because Dr. Francis Chris Wilson told us this. And keep in mind, this man is worried about what we going to do, what black people going to do. They're worried about what the foundational black Americans, the descendants from in slavery, are going to do when he's gone. You know, that's just... It's just stupid and sick, but that's the white supremacist. So these, right. these white supremacists or white foundational white Americans who want to get their dick wet and they knock up some minority woman, you just killed your own race. You're committing racial suicide because that kid's non-white. And so that pisses me off when I'm going, oh, you're a white supremacist. Oh, I mean, a foundational white American and you're knocking up 
a Latino or an, an Asian, what the hell is wrong with you? You're committing racial suicide. And it's just, it's not good. Right. And, and a lot of what the white supremacists will do, they'll just kind of get into these little segregated enclaves and then they'll start getting into these ancestral relationships. And that's kind of big. And that doesn't work out either because then you got all of the congenitive, um, congenital disorders and the neurological disorders. So that's that's kind of speeding up the process. Well, the so. truth is, Tariq, um, majority of white supremacist males can't actually tell their white girlfriends that they're white supremacists because i don't know it's just female nature they're most some will you know some like hillbillies they'll be up with that but like if you're in the if you're in like the northern suburbs or whatever and you say hey you know i hate black people they'll be like uh you know they might stay with you but it's just it's not like a a bonus so you have to kind of be quiet about that and they might you know you have to give little hints but then you you basically say oh you know because of my religion which you're not i'm not really in religion let's have 10 kids you know be fruitful and multiply and nowadays white women want to have like one kid which is below replacement level and uh, right. but i try to pretend i'm not even religious I, I try to pretend i say hey look you know we're both religious right let's have 10 kids and then she'll be like no nah, I, I only want two max i'm like well that's that's still not replacing that's still below replacement right because you need three to to add and so it's just we got to figure that out but we're, we're probably not going to be around and pretty soon so we need these immigrants and probationary to whites to keep the fbas in check so trump you know trump's old and dementia i thought he was i don't know trump's being an idiot with saying oh no we're going to deport all these immigrants he doesn't realize that he's basically just laying the groundwork for fbas to take over deporting all these immigrants you know these immigrants are pretty not all of them but some of them most of them i'd say are anti-black so trump's basically right. saying here let me deport all these anti-black immigrants oh, i think i'm doing something good and then when the white people die off black people are just going to take over so Trump's being an yeah. idiot, so I, I can't really. And you might say, like, why is this man saying all this to black people? You got to realize it's actually comfortable when they can speak their mind to black people, to everybody, and people understand what they're saying. I mean, they just it's just comforting to them to be able to openly say their beliefs. I support him. With, I, honestly, I'd probably ride with Biden, to be honest, because, you know, black people are like, oh, Biden's so good, but truth is he he went to robert bird's funeral i've seen him in the 70s make comments about racial jungles and stuff so it's like and i think biden pretends to be like oh yeah you know i'm all for black people but i i I think deep down he's one of us he's just right me too i think i think he's a white person too but listen all right so y'all heard that basically you know these people they know that these people are white supremacists and they have an agenda but i do want to go to this part too it's there's there's a lot of talking heads on youtube uh and in tiktok and all these other things and anybody that has the language that wants to demonize you for believing in what they what they term as conspiracy theories uh especially but if your theory is based on a series of actual facts that you have actually seen and have a record of just because you don't know the full scope of the thing uh they don't want you to believe anything they want you to wait until you see every piece of evidence which is usually too late and then you can believe whatever but the whole deed is done they don't want you to believe the. Tr- they don't want you to start predicting the tr- uh, track record of certain entities and you know start moving in front of it so this particular you know waste waste here you know he he, you really never see his actual face uh his name is uh psychopathius on youtube but um he's always on q butter's channel which you see q butter's face and uh but the thing is is this him and this other girl they they for some reason i don't know if they figured out the way to get paid or whoever the contact the political circles that they be around they're always pushing the establishment line uh and they're always on youtube it's almost like they're making money doing this so you know he's always pushing the establishment line he don't want no no conspiracy theories there's no collusion there's nothing and he wants to put all the focus on alex jones and you know as if everybody gets their talking points from Alex Jones, you know, the replacement theory, these, uh, the white, uh, uh, birth rate reduction, uh, 
theories and stuff like that and knowledge. This comes from, uh, you know, Frances Cress Welsing. She had a debate in 1970 with the um, eugenicist William Shockley. Okay, so that's probably even before Alice Jones was even born. So the thing is, you know, this Negro is, is just idiots, but these he's just representative of the entities that's out there that want to push uh, people to be absolutely dumbfounded and ignorant to patterns and predictions. He wants us to just, you know, listen to him, though. He going to tell you. And if you disagree with him, all that kind of stuff, he, he, he can't stand nobody else talking because he's got, uh, for some reason, it gives him a, a, a button to mute everybody else. You know, so that way his ignorant commentary can, you know, at almost be legitimized. But, you know, I just want y'all to listen to this little fact. But, you know, the thing is, too, then we want to go into the Paul Ryan thing. And I just want to show y'all some, um, you know, just some stuff that kind of bolsters the facts that and, and facts can come from anywhere. We don't have to just because Alex Jones says something. If it's true, it's true. So what? See, Negroes like this dude, Psychopathius, he, he, if he can't beat the, the substance and the truth of a, of a point, he, what he does is pitches a fit, he gets mad, and then what they'll do is they try to delegitimize the actual person that maybe has repeated the truth, which is not legitimate because the truth is still going to bear out in reality. But, you know, I just wanted y'all to hear this little example of this and, and then we'll move on to the Paul Ryan and just some other little points and then we'll get out of here. All right, peace. Hey, y'all got, y'all have to stop, 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 stop. This is crazy. I, 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 I'm, in these, I'm in these political spaces and I'm going to tell y'all, this shit wasn't created by no CIA. It wasn't created by, uh, it, yeah, um, he said that. Uh, he, he he just said yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was it was right, right, let me finish let me finish let me finish let me finish it wasn't created it was created by a bunch of white supremacists on Correct. 4chan on 8chan Correct. on Correct. all the QAnon and all these little conspiracy all these Alex Jones followers talking this globalist shit because that's where y'all got this globalist talk from with Alex Jones CIA, right, I'm not I'm not I'm not done I'm not done talking y'all woke me up with this shit now let me motherfucker get my points off. Oh. Now, 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 y'all got y'all getting this stuff from crazy, kooky white people that follow Alex Jones because y'all using all the buzz terms, all yeah. the buzz languages. I've never watched Alex Jones. Well, well, you what well, you listen to somebody who watch Alex Jones? Well, I, see how he, see how he just make up some stupid stuff because he his point got debunked. So I'm, I'm telling you where the information is coming from. If you got it from a black person, that black person got it from Alex Jones. I'm telling you where the source of the information is. Because y'all don't fact check these people when y'all hear these what black people yeah, talking this shit. And I'm telling you, these black people are getting this stuff from Alex Jones. I'll give you the primary source of where this information is coming from. So you can tell a bootleg because they just say stuff, you know, and you they you they want you to prove your stuff, but they don't have to prove their little crap that they talk. But I do I just wanted y'all to hear that because these type of tricks, deceptions, and these weirdos are all here all over the place. Now, I do want to show how um, Trump and the Republicans are, you know, how, how white people will vote for Biden, how the white supremacists are voting for Biden over Trump, just like the other guy said, because they believe that black folks have to be kept in check. And people like Paul Ryan, they, you know, they're going to, uh, even though they're Republicans, but they're going to prefer Biden. And they want you to prefer Biden. They want their other white people to prefer Biden. So let's just listen to some of this and then we're going. Those suburban voters like Donald Trump more since January 6th? I mean, good grief. They didn't vote for him this last time. They're not going to vote for him again. So I try to make more of a practical argument to would-be Trump supporters that we lose with the guy. Pick somebody else. I'd say if I had a bet, it'd be Biden. Because if it's Biden-Trump, I think Biden wins. Um, I personally would rather not see that. Um, I would rather see a Republican win, not named Donald Trump. Just if you notice, Paul Ryan, which was the, he was the Speaker of the House. Now, this is a Republican. He actually prefers Biden over Trump. This is what the man basically said. And this is creating a feud in white circles. This is white people stuff. Now, the thing is, though, you got to understand, 
when you're looking at this here, uh, to me, I look at this, okay, what's the easiest side for the black folks to actually get something done? And maybe a lot of times it's no no easy side. <clears throat> but just look at this uh, this this problem that they have between here. So basically they're saying Paul Ryan is the enemy of the alt-right. This is the messaging that white folks are getting from different factions in their leadership. They're breaking up. Paul Ryan, uh, you know, he's a blue-eyed white man and he's like a picture-perfect, you know, alt-right, you know, racist type guy. Now, he doesn't say that. He definitely shows that He's distancing himself from that group, but, you know, he is that guy as far as his actions. So, you know, I'm not going to read really all of this stuff, but the point is, here's some of the tweets that Donald Trump put out. They're saying that despite winning the second debate in a landslide, he's winning all the polls against Biden. It's hard to do well when Paul Ryan and others give zero support. So this very weak and ineffective leader. So Donald Trump is putting the focus against Paul Ryan because Paul Ryan is not going to be quiet. He hates Donald Trump. He would literally vote for the Democrat. Paul Ryan is a Republican, a speaker of the house, an active Republican. And he openly says that he would vote for Biden. So what, what policies, what is Biden? What is Paul Ryan looking at in Biden? Because he's, he's actually a very practical type of guy. Disloyal ours are far more difficult than crooked Hillary. Wow. See, now, everybody knows that Donald Trump hates Hillary Clinton, but he's angry at the Republicans who are disloyal. They come at you from all sides. They don't know how to win. I will teach them. So this is the thing with uh, the Donald Trump situation and these white folks. Uh, they're internally battling uh, black folks. We don't really need to get caught up in all of that stuff. But this this battle really is centered down on their how to win dominance over these darker peoples and these this is what they're arguing we got to be able to see it so let me show you something different here and so we'll look right here here's another guy this is a big influencer in the white supremacist um you know circles okay a lot of us don't know these type of people sometimes we do but this is Richard Spencer. He's an alt-right guy. He's the guy down there in Charlottesville, uh, North Carolina, talking about the Jews won't replace them. Uh, the replacement theory. This is the guy, too. So with Tucker Carlson. Now, the, the, the problem with some of black people is just because they feel that the white man said it and then the black people can't say it now. Otherwise, you get it from the white man. The white man is saying it because they're seeing actual moves being made. That's how they're coming up with these conclusions. And the black man can look and see these moves being made as well. And we can see the same damn thing. So, and I, you know, I'm going to play something a little bit later just to show you how dumb these black people are and these shill lying Negroes are. All right, that, that get out here and talk. But anyway, notice white supremacist Richard Spencer. Now, this is a bona fide, legitimate, out and open white supremacist. He's, he will tell you he's a white supremacist. He votes for Joe Biden. As he tweets to hell with libertarian ideology. Now, keep in mind, this is way back in 2020. But Richard Spencer seen something. And this was seen way back in 2020 and before. The same reason why Joe Biden says way back in 2020 that this country is doomed not only because of African-Americans, but because of white people who are going to be uh, uh, who are going to be um, a, a minority by 2040. So this is Richard Spencer. He previously announced his uh, support for Joe Biden in August. So so later, Spencer uh, be, said that the Republican Party had become ineffective and declared his support for Biden. See, think about that. This is a white nationalist. He's he, this is his life. And he's voting the same party as. And he's getting benefits. He can be the Republicans or the Democrats, but he's deciding to vote for Biden. He's not supporting all the Democrats. He's supporting Biden. Okay. So, of course, Biden's campaign rejected Spencer's support based on his past views, but that did not stop Spencer from voting for the, you know, he don't care. He knows they're going to uh, vote. And he's advocating vote president and vice president, He, you know, vote in one oval. So Richard Spencer. So I just wanted to show y'all that. All right. So now right here. Keep in mind, we, we, we're just trying to connect some dots for you guys. Just a couple of days ago, 
So this Nazi link veteran, he was a Nazi. He was a veteran of the war in Germany and he was fighting against Russia. He was a Nazi. Nazi link veteran receives ovation during Zelensky's Canadian visit. So Zelensky is the the uh, president of the Ukraine. This is the place where Biden is sending all of our tax money. He's sending the black people's reparations money to. He's sending all of the infrastructure bill money to. This is where he's going head over heels to try to support uh, this Azov battalion, all of these Nazi-linked uh, Ukrainian uh, governmental officials. And this Nazi-linked veteran receives an ovation during Zelensky's Canadian visit. And then the House Speaker apologizes for leading tribute in Parliament. This initiative was entirely my own. Mm -hmm. Everybody in that audience uh, clapped. So the ranking Canadian parliamentary is apologizing to the Jewish community around the world for a blunder during Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's visit that led to lawmakers honoring every lawmaker in there honored this man. Now, these people are supposed to be abreast of history. Led to lawmakers honoring a veteran accused of belonging to a Nazi division in World War II. It followed demands by Canadian Jewish organizations uh, Sunday for an apology after it was revealed uh, members of the parliament across party lines awarded this 98 year old Nazi veteran they didn't say it but he's a Nazi veteran on Friday with a standing ovation shortly after Zelensky addressed Canadian Canada's House of Commons so Yaroslav Hunka stood and appeared to salute from the public gallery when he was recognized by House Speaker Anthony Rhoda who introduced Hunka as a Canadian Ukrainian war hero. See, this is what he introduced him was a Canadian Ukrainian war hero from his political district. See, so this man is well known there. So there's no mistake, baby. You know, y'all got to understand some things, a few things here. But why did they clap for him? Because he's known there. He's a Canadian Ukrainian war hero and he was helping Hitler. So we have here in the chamber today, a Ukrainian Canadian veteran from the Second World War who fought for Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today. So it's the same agenda going on today. OK, who's funding that agenda? Joe Biden. It is about white dominance there. It's about the Nazis effort. This is the agenda. This is the reason why the alt right will support Biden. This is the reason why, you know, this is what you're doing, because the Russians were actually an ally of, of the allies and fought against Nazis during World War II. This is what a lot of people don't understand. So now these Jewish advocacy groups, the friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center and all of these Jews, they get up there and they scream and holler. But that's the main point. They clap for this man. So I want you all to hear that. So hold on a second. A standing ovation for a Ukrainian veteran of the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today, even at his age of 98. Invited by House Speaker Anthony Rhoda to witness Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's address to Parliament, Yaroslav Unka is one of his constituents. He's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero. And we thank him for all his service. That was the jubilant scene Friday. Now new details have emerged about that war service and he's applauded. Kuka served in the 1st Galician Division, a voluntary unit commanded by the Nazis. The unit is complicit in the Holocaust. This Jewish human rights campaigner says there's no defending former soldiers like Kuka. You swore allegiance to Hitler and you were involved with the massacre of civilians. So it doesn't matter if you uh, try and claim that you were defending against communism, you were still involved with the Nazi war machine. The division's history is murky. It's volunteers united by a desire to take on the Soviet Union, says this academic. For them, the um, ultimate evil was Moscow occupation. Rhoda has now apologized and says he regrets ever inviting him. I recognize an individual in the gallery. I have subsequently become aware of more information which causes me to regret my decision to do so, he says in a statement. I accept full responsibility for my actions. Still, the opposition is asking how... <laughs> this could happen. The Prime Minister's office says it wasn't aware the Speaker had invited Hunka, saying in a statement, no advance notice was provided to the Prime Minister's office, nor the Ukrainian delegation, about the invitation or the recognition. And JP, you've been trying to reach Yaroslav Hunka. 
Yeah, Ian, we've asked Yaroslav Humka and his family to comment. There's been no response. He's defended, though, his war service in the past, calling it a fight for Ukrainian independence. Regardless, Russian propagandists have already pounced, using his presence in Parliament to malign Ukraine and Canada's support for their war effort. Ian? So y'all got to understand right there, that just kind of shows you how, you know, this is the, the dynamic. This is the war. This is the battle in the white circles about how to proceed forward because their whiteness is actually crumbling and breaking down. So when black folks are sitting up here trying to pick sides, uh, which white people to support and stuff, we need to be using this time to be trying to, you know, increase our power, increase our community development you know, increase our systems and ownership and defense of what we have, the little bit of nothing that we have. All that arguing about who who is better and all that kind of stuff, really, you know, we can be doing better stuff with our with our advocacy. We really can. So and so right here, this is a, this is an article. This is March 19th. It was before the current uh, hostilities just show basically public. And this is Reuters. So this is what they were reporting before it became popular to not report this. The Ukraine's neo-Nazi problem. They have a big problem with Nazis. OK, so Kiev, you know, this is this is something that, you know, we should know when we're supporting which white people. So Vladimir Putin sees, sees Crimea. Uh, the bottom line is these guys are neo-Nazis. You know, this is uh, according to Freedom House, Ukraine's project director, Matthew Schaff, numerous organized radical right wing groups exist in Ukraine. Now, keep in mind, these are the same thing as white nationalists. These are the same thing as the KKK, black people in America. This is what Biden is funding with your tax dollars. This is who you're defending. This here this is what you're defending. That's why he called LL Cool J, J boy. Le boy. That's how he think. This is an old man. Biden is an old ass man. Oh, that's white man. He's proud of his whiteness. So the Ukrainian project, Matthew Shub, numerous, you know, Ukraine, while the, now these are volunteers, just like that, um, that Nazi unit that they were applauding, the guy, he was a volunteer. So he believed in that. So Ukraine, while the volunteer battalions uh, may have been officially integrated into state structures, some of them have since spun off uh, political and nonprofit structures to implement their vision. Ukraine and its conflict with Russia has coincided uh, with an apparent increase in both public hate speech, sometimes by public officials and magnified by the media, as well as violence uh, towards vulnerable groups such as the LGBT community and observation that it's that is supported by a recent Council of Europe study. In recent months, Ukraine. Now, keep in mind, this is 2018. This is before even Trump got elected. Uh, no, not Trump, before Biden got elected. Ukraine has experienced a wave of unchecked vigilantism. Institute Republica, a local pro-democracy NGO, reported that the activists, you know, the bottom line is this Azov and other militias have attacked anti-fascist demonstrations. You know, so, and everybody says Trump is a fascist, but, you know, he might be, but at the same time, you know, you just need to be aware of what the hell you fucking supporting. And like I said before, you got to realize that Russia actually fought and killed Nazis. So you got to be careful, just like them people stood up and was clapping uh, for a damn Nazi who would uh, exterminate uh, their Jewish friends and damn near kill the black folks. You know, y'all sitting up here uh, advocating for something. Y'all don't know what the hell's going on. You got to be careful on both sides of this coin.